Do you know something when I was young that I used to fish lobster fishing and mackerel fishing out on the islands? Me and my, my brother, my other brother. So the way it was, we had no engine, and it was about six or seven miles of a row. Uh, bad was we had to stay on the islands. Do you know? Well, I remember one time we, we were caught in a, with a big gear from the southeast. And we had to live on, uh, stay on the island. And we had no camper, and he was a teacher. Pull up the corrach, cut rushes with a knife, and put them on the, on, uh, on the beach, just above the high tide mark. So there was no danger of getting wet under the corrach anyways, because which you would lake on the sea if you had a lake but was, we had we had very little food with us. It was about four o'clock in the evening when we pulled in, you know. After pulling all the pots and sitting them and baking for the next morning. The sun was going down now on the west day about and you know when we, we went to sleep in our clothes. We come it's half we'd we go, go out again, you know. But we were up at four o'clock in the morning, you know, we had to row on to be in there before the sun would rise or get too hot and have all the lobsters put by in the score pot. So anyways, do you know what time we woke? Five o'clock in the next morning. We were so tired, we slept all the night through. And how I knew, I was wondering, you know, because we could see the sun out under the colour. I was wondering how was the sun rising in the west <laughs> when it's rising in the east in the morning we got mixed up all together I, I seen the other I said I said you better get up I said there's something wrong I said and he had a tap on him I had to laugh at him and was, a tap on him I was in the, under the collar so we got up and the day was a oh, blizzard a storm and we had nothing but us only about three ounces of bread each. We were two days living on that, without a bit. And we used to get up and go up on top of the high part of the island up from us, and that was about five miles away, so to the mainland. And the, I said, you would never chance it out in that, I because when they brought the cap off you, I said, it's too bad, I said, put your teeth. That's when your chest was about to go, if it took the brew the cap off you, it was too bad to go on the sea. But anyways, I had to laugh. We went back down into the car again, and we said, we better sleep it out. I said, we won't be too hungry. Got up again the next morning, the same way, and the gain on. It was two days almost that way. And I said to, to the mate, I said, I said, live or die now. I said, I'm a good swimmer. I said, I'll keep close to the shore, the Mio shore. I said, if anything happened, I said, I leave you two paddles and you lying on the my shell you could throw it in and I said I'll get help. So that was that, that now was near enough. But honest to God, we went sideways and we made the killery right away and when we got in a bit in that killery, we turned to right for a place called Lachlan and we came back among the land and when we landed there there was about ten or twelve meeting us and there's a Guinness Bottles of Guinness, because they knew we were hungry and thirsty. But uh, we couldn't make it to our own harbour. We, we went to that place uh, over, and by cribes pulled up the corrach there and walked it home. And they said they'd never seen a corrach come on such a bad day. Mm. Uh, I thought we'd never make it, but by God, thank God we made it. And I'm telling you now that I said we'll watch it again, never be caught in a storm like that.